It was a frigid winter morning when I began a 10 hour drive to the western shores of Lake Superior. With freezing rain, heavy snow, and high winds all in the forecast, we knew we'd be faced with adversity over the next several days. We loaded down our pickups with a wall tent, a wood stove, ice shanty, and all the gear to fish both open and hard water before jumping headfirst into this great Michigan adventure. Greg, I got a double. Oh my God! All right, got one too. Yeah, let me call you right back. So we arrived at our starting destination on day one. Our original plan for this trip was to ice fish a couple bays off of Lake Superior for whitefish, lake trout, coho salmon, a whole variety of species really. But since it's been a mild winter, we didn't have any ice at this time. So we decided to change our route and go hit an inland system that actually connects to Lake Superior. This system connects to Lake Superior on both ends and flows all the way through the Keweenaw Peninsula near the Houghton and Hancock area. The reason why this system was so intriguing to us is that it does connect to a great lake and any system that connects to a great lake has a chance for big trophy migratory fish swimming through it whether it be a big walleye big northern some kind of a trout species or even perch and panfish trying to kill an old man like this bro Whew. Getting me into shape though. Pulling out my all my gear. Whew, mile and two tenths feels like five miles already. We're good. <laughs> well, a local angler felt bad for us walking all this way, so he decided. Give us a little ride, so we got the train going on here, guys. We got the train going. We're getting up there, bro. Good one. What was that? Dude, I don't, it's almost like a single track snow, snow machine track with a five horse Briggs and Stratton motor. <laughs> That's what it was. Well, I am very thankful for the gentleman that gave us a ride because we were definitely getting in for more than what we bargained for with the walk out here. We thought it was just about a mile and a half walk, but somehow we didn't measure the distance correctly and it turned out to be about three miles. So we got a ride out here. Now we're just gonna have to find a ride back in in a couple days, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Greg's getting some tip-ups out. We just finished getting the tent put up. We're gonna get some lines in the water and then we're gonna see if we can catch a wall out here before dark. So pretty much what we did guys is we got on Navionics. It's an app you can get on your phone. It shows you all the different depth contours out here on the lake that you're fishing. So we got on Navionics, we found some breaks, we found some points and humps, a little bit of structure that we're gonna fish over the top of. So we're gonna start in about 20 to 30 feet of water and then as it keeps getting darker, we're gonna move in a little shallower, put some tip ups in about 12 feet of water. So we're gonna cover all the depths and uh, spread things out a little bit until we can get something dialed in. And then tomorrow we're gonna set up the shack and go jig on some good spots.
Well, we are just keeping it simple tonight, guys. We got some steaming hot beans, some Bush's baked beans. We got some venison brats and the Bunsen burner here. Got a nice dinner at camp. We're gonna eat some dinner and uh, then we're gonna go check these tip ups and get them all set up for the night. Yeah. Stiff bones don't want to freaking move this morning. Wow. The weather has drastically changed. We're supposed to get a lot of rain and a lot of snow now. Yesterday I was saying just a little bit of rain, maybe a little bit of snow, but it's saying, holy crap, high near 34, south winds 10 to 15 with gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. One to three inches of snow expected, up to one inch of rain expected. That's gonna get nasty out here. And uh, I think what we're gonna have to do, man, I'm looking at this, it's gonna be freezing rain all the way till tomorrow night. And then it's gonna get cold. Holy cow, it's gonna get cold. Wednesday, 20 degrees, so it's gonna get wet, and then it's all gonna freeze, so we can't be leaving Wednesday when it's that cold. This tent setup won't be good. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, freezing rain all day, so it looks like our only option is, is to leave here in a little bit, guys. I think we're gonna have to leave here today. Well, I am honestly shocked. We haven't had a single flag, haven't had a single bite. We've had our tip-ups out all night. We had them out for the last hour of daylight last night and the first hour of daylight this morning. And we haven't had a single bite. We were really hoping we'd have a flag. That way we could go off a little piece of information, try to find a depth that the fish were holding near or try to find a piece of structure they were holding on. But it just hasn't happened yet. We have tip-ups out in 30 feet of water and we got them up in about 12. So we're just gonna hope for the best here. Our morning definitely didn't get off to an optimal start though. We missed out on the first probably hour and a half of daylight just getting our camp packed up because we definitely didn't have the option of packing up camp this afternoon when it's going to be pouring rain and snowing and we definitely didn't have the option of packing it up the next two days so you got to do what you got to do we got our camp packed up and we're just going to fish here until the weather starts getting crappy and hope for the best see what happens there were a couple different reasons that forced us to pretty much make this decision. With the first one being that it was raining and we were on a system that we were unfamiliar with. And since the system connects to Lake Superior, there's obviously a lot of current that comes through there. So with the warmer temperatures, the rain, that can really deteriorate the ice fast and we don't know this system, so we felt to play it safe and get off the ice. And the other reason being, we had a two and a half to three mile walk back and our sleds were just loaded down with heavy gear. They were very hard to pull. And all I could think about is, this is gonna be a real nightmare to pull all this gear about three miles if we get a ton of slush and slop on the ice so we decided to play it safe get off the ice and make a plan for day three not too good for us had this weather front move in and i think it kind of shut the bite down a little bit but it's a struggle for sure marked a few this morning on the vexar but couldn't get none to take so i think we're gonna pack up and venture back to the truck which is about three miles from here so We'll figure out a plan, see what we'll do maybe this afternoon or maybe in the morning, we'll see. Well, these adventures definitely aren't always peaches and cream. We got our kicked on this one. <laughs> but you'll have that, you'll have that, especially coming to new places like this and exploring new waters. It's uh, It can be very difficult sometimes and that's exactly the cards we were dealt with. We didn't have a bite, we walked a ways. Greg, uh, Greg took a tumble on the snowmobile as we we're coming back in. <laughs> a friendly youper scooped us up but he was hauling ass. Oh, he was cranking, guys. I I was sitting on the back of the snowmobile. Check out this voice over here. I was sitting on the back of the snowmobile holding Greg, and this guy just pins the throttle, and all of a sudden, Greg's sled catches like a piece of ice, and it just flips the sled, and or Greg goes flying on the tumbling down the ice, and our shock spilled over, and all of our gear spilled out all across the ice, but all of our gear is soaking wet, and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure what to do at this point, so stay tuned. We're going to figure something out. 
So our plan today, guys, is just to hike out to where we camped last time, but this time we're just gonna bring our fishing stuff. We're not gonna bring all the excess gear that we had last time. We're just gonna bring our fishing stuff and we're gonna fish all day. It's about 5.30 in the morning right now, so we're gonna be there about six. And our plan is, is to give ourselves plenty of time to walk out there, because we're assuming it's gonna be pretty slushy. Kind of concerned a little bit. No vehicles here yet this morning, but uh, we'll find out. Um, we can get on the ice here and get out there. It's probably going to take us about 45 minutes to get out there, get set up. So hopefully we can catch a good morning bite this morning. Alright guys, well we're all set up, we got the shack up, we got a few tip ups out and we are just about to start jigging. So what I did here guys, is we got on Navionics, we found a different break, we found a little steeper break in the same general area where we camped last time, but we changed our position just a little bit. We came to the other side of this point that stuck out and we spread our tip ups out. So I just finished getting the tip ups out, I made a big line of them here and that line runs right along this break. I got one tip up in about 15 feet of water, one is in about 18 to 20, and one is in about 24 to 26 so we're gonna cover some different depths uh, then we're gonna start jigging in the shack here the shacks in about 18 feet of water so we got things spread out hopefully we'll get a bite here soon and we'll be able to go off that piece of information we just got set up in the shanty here guys I looked out but we got a flag up baby we got a flag up let's go see if there's anything on it fish there's a fish here yep we got one Little pike! <laughs> little pike, guys, little pike. Well, dang it, guys, I was really hoping that was a walleye. It felt like a walleye. You know, it wasn't ripping line or anything. Usually those little pike will be ripping some line and pretty feisty. It just kind of came in and fought just like a walleye, but that's okay, at least uh, we caught a fish and we got the skunk out, so it's a start. So what we got here guys is we got some of these small little golden shiner minnows and we're putting live minnows on our tip ups here. So this is just a small little golden shiner and I'm just gonna hook them with a treble hook right through the dorsal or right just above the dorsal. And uh, yeah, we're gonna send them back down there. Hopefully a big pike or walleye comes along now. It's been a very, very quiet day out here. It feels like the Dead Sea. We've marked a couple fish. Greg's marked a couple fish on his Vexlar, but we have not seen a whole lot of activity. But hopefully some fish will move up here on this ledge as it starts to get darker here this afternoon. So fingers crossed, we will see what happens. Well, I think that about does it for us today, guys. We're gonna start walking back. We have about a two and a half mile walk back and the only thing we caught all day today was one small snake pike. We've been moving around. We've had tip ups out all day. We've been jigging all day and that was the only bite we had the entire day. So we're gonna walk back and uh, get back to the launch and figure out a plan for tomorrow. I think we're gonna switch it up a little bit and go hit the shoreline of Lake Superior and see if we can do a little bit better on the surf. Going into day four, we knew we had to switch something up to change our luck. So we decided that we'd try fishing the shoreline of Lake Superior for some sort of a trout or salmon species. So I got on my phone, I start looking at Navionics, looking to see where the different depth contours are running. I'm looking at some satellite images to see where the sandbars are at and to see where it's ice free along the shoreline of Lake Superior. So we get a few places in mind, a few places that we'd go to throughout the day and we head to our first spot in the morning. So when we get to this first spot in the morning, I was absolutely amazed amazed. There was already six cars parked there and this was at 7.30 in the morning which is well in the dark and I'm seeing people casting off the shore all over the place so I'm thinking okay you know maybe this is their break maybe there's something going on here these people can't be here that early for no reason this time of year right? Right? I hope. So we figured what the heck let's give it a try. All right buddy let's go get them guys. Where are you guys from? What's that? Where are you guys from? Good luck. Is, is, you do pretty good out here? I haven't caught anything this year. Really? Yeah. Bombs away, brother.
Well, we just finished getting our bait rods in the water. So what we're doing here, guys, is we have four rods just still fishing with bait. We have salmon eggs tied in a mesh netting that makes a little ball shape, and that ball shape has floaters in it, and that just floats up off the bottom. So we have those casted out on these four rods and rod holders, and then I'm gonna be casting this one ounce Luna jig here. It's just a white Luna jig, got a little glow in it. And I'm just gonna whip it out as far as I can and just kind of hop it right up off the bottom all the way back in. So that's our program we're gonna try, and we'll see what happens, see if we get bit, then we'll go from there. Keep cast. Good job. Oh, fish, 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 fish. Got one, guys. Fish on, baby. Fish on, baby. Oh, this is a little rascal. Well, guys, we have our first fish of the morning. It looks like a little splake. Let's check them out here. Wow, guys, how cool is this? Check out this little splake. It's just a little guy, but that is just a beautiful, beautiful fish. We're gonna get the hook out of him here. Well, it's around 10 o'clock and we finally just had our first bite, but mission accomplished. We caught a splake. I've been adjusting the different depth on all the bait rods. I've thrown some way out deep. I've thrown some close to the shore and shallow and uh, been switching up the leader lengths and we finally had a bite. So hopefully we'll be able to start putting the pieces of the puzzle together and figure them out here. But that's definitely a sign of good things. After that first fish in the morning, I'm feeling confident. You know, we'd only been fishing an hour, had a bite, caught a splake, my first splake ever. I'm pumped up and I'm excited. But then a couple hours go by with no bites, another hour goes by with no bites, then people start leaving, so I'm starting to question, man, is this even gonna happen? So a very friendly local angler was getting ready to leave, walking by me, and he said that splake I caught was the first fish he's seen caught here this year. Typically, he said, there'd be all kinds of fish here right now because the smelt come in and then all the predator fish come in to feed on the smelt, of course. But he said that just hasn't set up like that this year. He hasn't seen any fish caught. And he's also been fishing Portage Lake where we just were, and he said he's been out there six times this year and hasn't caught a single walleye and hasn't even heard of a good report out there this year. We went and got a nice lunch, got warm, and decided to just go take a drive. So we're driving along, and I noticed this little dock that sticks out into Lake Superior a bit. So I asked Greg if he'd pull over, and I said, I'm just going to take a walk, man. I'm going to go take a walk and check out this dock. So I'm walking out there, and I get to the end of the dock. You know, I'm looking around at the, the conditions, looking around. I see this drop off that's not too far off the dock where it looks like it gets really deep quick. I'm noticing the wind picking up which was blowing waves right at us, which is perfect for surf fishing. I'm also noticing a little stained water on the shoreline that's coming out of the mouth of this creek. So I'm looking at this stained water, looking at the wind blowing towards us, and I'm thinking, man, you know what? This is gonna be our best opportunity to catch some fish. So I walk back to the truck, you know, I'm kicking the snow bank. I give it a good Clint Eastwood spit in the ground and it's like, all right, man, let's go try this, whatever, you know, what are we gonna do? We'll go sit at the Airbnb, we get our stuff around, we go walk out to the dock when it's freezing rain now, wind's blowing right in our face, throw our lines out there, and uh, what happened next, I, I really can't believe. I still can't believe it to this day. Guys, we just got set up here. We just got the rods in the water, and we got a bite. This thing was getting munched on. I have no idea what this fish is. Oh, it's a nice, it's a nice steely, it's a nice steely. Oh, it's a nice steely. I don't know how we're gonna get him in, guys. I cannot believe this, guys. I don't know how we're gonna land him. This pier's way up here and we don't even have a net and these rocks are all ice. We're gonna try to land this fish here, guys. We're gonna try to land this fish here. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna try to step down on this rock. Oh, there's such big boulders around here. Wow, what a beautiful fish. What a beautiful fish. Oh my goodness, guys, we got one. We got one, baby. We got one, baby. 
I honestly couldn't believe it. I looked back and a rod was getting bit and we finally got a steelhead on the bank here. I don't know how well this audio is showing up, but we're gonna get this guy right back in the water. You gotta do it, man. I know you want, dude. Oh, fish, 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 fish. fish. Oh, this is awesome, bro. This is what we come after, buddy. Greg, I got a double. Oh my god, what is that? Is that right? Got one too. Yeah, it'll be right back. Huge brown. <laughs> Huge brown, guys. Oh my god. It is such a beautiful fish. I am so nervous right now. Oh my gosh. holding that line what a brown trout unbelievable guys i cannot tell you how excited i am to have caught this fish what a beautiful beautiful brown trout dude this is unbelievable i think we've landed three fish in the last maybe five minutes Unbelievable hit. That fish absolutely annihilated. I thought I was gonna lose my rod and he's still just been ripping drag, man. For Lake Superior Steelhead, this is a bruiser right here, guys. You guys have heard me talk about in some previous videos about how you want a good surf. You want the wind blowing right in your face. You want the rain coming down and that's the best time to come out here and fish to surf. The nastier the weather, the better. And we are out here proving that today. Yeah, Kyle, he hooked one and I looked over and I seen the other rod going with it. So we got a double, baby. Thank you, drag, baby. Man, this has been an epic day, brother. Unbelievable day. Came out, never expected this at all. Middle of January in the UP. Unbelievable. And not a soul around. <laughs> not a fisherman. Well, I will tell you guys what. We have fought so hard for this day. The episodes before this, we didn't even show all the hard times that we had. We were just getting our butts kicked on trips day in and day out. And the first bit of success we had was this morning with the small split. So it just feels so good to finally come out here and hit on some fish. I've surf fished Lake Superior, Lake Michigan my entire life. And as anybody knows who surf fishes, it can be an extremely hit or miss style of fishing, especially in the winter and especially on Lake Superior. So I'm just so thankful that we hit it on the right day, got lucky. Honestly, it was just, I wasn't expecting anything at all. I was just expecting to come down, kill some time, and not just sit in the Airbnb. And we were absolutely rewarded. And I just, I'm amazed. I'm truly amazed. He's on, baby. He's on, He's baby. On, baby. I'm going to set the hook into that one. Wow, guys, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. I'm going to see if I can get back out on my rock. Oh, my goodness. What a nice male. That is such a gorgeous fish. Nice, pretty male too. He's got some beautiful winter colors on him. Come out here to a new spot we've never fished before and find some fish is just extremely lucky. But at this point, I'll take it.
Well, what a truly incredible day that was, guys. That was so awesome. And that deer was really cool, too. There's a deer on this trail here. We're headed back to our Airbnb and uh, had to stop and check out these waterfalls here. The western UP, the whole western side of Lake Superior, all the way up through Canada, is filled with some beautiful waterfalls and some beautiful scenery areas along the Lake Superior shoreline. So I had to stop and go check out this waterfall before we got back to our Airbnb. That waterfall was so beautiful. I love little hidden gems like that. But we are back at our Airbnb here, guys, and we're just about to get some dinner going. I'm gonna do some Parmesan trout tonight. I'm gonna show you the recipe, take you guys along with us the whole way. Maggie has made this recipe in a video before, but we're gonna do it again tonight because it absolutely rocks. So right here, guys, this is the front of the filet right here. This is the top part of the filet where my knife is. And there's a pin bone line that runs right here. And all salmon and trout species have this pin bone line. And now to remove this, what I like to do is I like to take my knife and I like to run my knife just down along those bones. The bones kind of curve in. So I'm just gonna let my knife just ride right along those bones. You can hear my knife's riding right around those bones. I'm gonna come right about here, right about where the butt section comes down. And now I have a nice, clean, boneless piece of meat. I'm gonna take this tail piece off here. I start, I usually take the tail piece off right about where the butt's at on the fish. So I'm gonna trim off these edges a little bit and now I got a nice clean tail piece here. What I like to do guys for my recipes is I like to take all this brown meat off. You can see there's a lot of brown meat on the back side here. I like to take the majority of that off here. So I'm gonna run my knife down Kind of curve it in. And that's just like where a lot of the fishy tasting stuff is. And then we're gonna have two really nice clean tail pieces of trout there. Now I'm gonna take my knife here. I'm gonna run it right along the other side of those bones. I'm try to save as much meat as I can. And then when you do it right, you're just gonna have one clean strip of bones here. So now I'm gonna flip my filet over. Now I'm gonna come back up to the front here, guys, and you can see this is the bone line right here. Now I'm gonna take my knife here, and now this whole bottom piece is gonna be a nice, clean, boneless piece of meat there. Man, that is just some beautiful place. I am so excited for this dinner tonight. Well, I think we have everything ready to put together here, guys. I just pan seared the garlic and the tomatoes in a pan. I cooked the noodles and then just pan fried that fish in a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic salt, and that's all we did to it. And uh, now we're gonna put it together. Well, we got our noodles in the bowl here, guys. How I'm gonna put this together is I'm just gonna put some fish on top of our noodles, and then we're gonna take our tomato sauce here. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of fish on top of these noodles. And then we're gonna take this tomato garlic sauce here. I might have overcooked the tomatoes a little bit, but you know what, it'll be fine. We're gonna put that right on top. We're gonna hit our lemon first, I think. We'll hit the lemon just over the top, get that over our fish, and then we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese. I guess we'll see how this turned out. Well, I'm just about to give it my first bite here, guys. The guys are already eating over here and they say it's pretty awesome, so we're gonna give it a try. I'm definitely having a blast from the past right now. The last time I had this recipe, we were in 
I think Pennsylvania last year. We did those coho, yeah. And that's the last time I had this recipe. It was also the first time I ever had this recipe. Maggie made it for me and it was just absolutely incredible. And it's kind of been in the back of my mind for the last few months and uh, just decided to give it a try again today. Oh man, it is just as good as I remember. The flavors just blend so nicely. You can taste the lemon, the tomatoes, the garlic, the fresh fish, and the noodles all just blend so smoothly. And it's really awesome. This is like, honestly, like a high dollar. Tastes like something a high dollar you'd get in a restaurant, honestly. And it just is a great way to enjoy your fresh catch. But what an awesome day, guys. I just can't believe how this day unfolded, especially after the last few days of just getting our butts absolutely handed to us. We've had some rough goes lately, guys. We just finished up an ice fishing trip right before we fished today, and that was a really rough go. I mean, the weather was terrible. The fish was tough. We had to walk a ton. It was just a really, really challenging adventure, so it was really refreshing to get on some fish today, especially after how our morning started off. You know, we talked to a lot of locals. There wasn't a whole lot going on. We had that one bite, caught that one small splake, but that's all we caught, really, and we really were not expecting to land on what we did. It was just happened to be in the right place at the right time and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, but we'll definitely take some good luck after the trip we've been on. We'll definitely have Kyle make it again for sure. <laughs> yep. Might just as well. I don't know the recipe of it, but it's good. Mm. Well, thanks so much for coming along with us on another adventure guys i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to go down below here leave us a comment and also hit that thumbs up button for us we really appreciate it and we will see you back here in probably a week i think a week our next video will be out if not a week within the next two weeks we'll have a new upload out so we will see you guys back here in our next episode <music>